let's suppose that we decide to toss a coin maybe 10 times. If I toss the coin, it's possible that I might end up with a situation like this. I could roll heads or tails. And maybe suppose I got four heads and six tails. That seems reasonable that that could happen. Now, according to this experiment that I have going on right here, the probability of getting heads would be four out of the 10 tries, which is about 40%. Well, that sounds kind of weird because if I flip a coin, it seems like the probability of getting heads should be 50%. This is the difference between what we call experimental and theoretical probability. The contingency tables that we did in the last section were able to break down information based on a survey or an experiment or something along those lines, and we used that collected data to figure out probabilities. But sometimes there are situations where we have equally likely outcomes that might happen. And Situations might end up like this. Uh, if I were to flip, ten, flip a coin 10 times again, I might get 5, 5, and 5. I might get 6 and 4. I might even get 10 and 0. Not very likely, but entirely possible. The truth is, is that the more of these trials, the more of these experiments that you do, the closer and closer that you end up getting to this theoretical probability. Um, and so if we're in a situation where we can actually track those equally likely outcomes, then we can come up with our best value for what that probability is going to be. All right, so in a case like this, if I'm going to flip one coin, I have two options of values that I could get. I could get a heads or a tails, and each of these is equally likely to occur. The probability of getting heads is one out of two. There's two options, and heads is one of those options. Some other common probability questions that we may see sometimes might involve something like, let's say, a spinner. Maybe, let's say, kind of like a twister or something like that where you have red and green and yellow and blue. And each one of these is an option that we could get and they're each equally likely because they're the same size space on the spinner. I can list out all of my options, red, green, yellow, blue, and the probability of getting any one of those, so let's say the probability of getting red would be one out of four. A last common one that we see is a standard dice. And uh, when we're talking about dice, we're just usually talking about the six-sided dice unless it specifies otherwise in the problem. And so our options of things that we could get would be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. And with a fair dice, any of those options is equally likely so the probability, let's say, of rolling a one is one out of those six total options in our space. These lists here of all the possible likely outcomes is called a sample space. Now, let's consider a, a sample space that might be a little bit more complex. Instead of just flipping one coin, let's suppose that we want to flip two coins. Our flipping of one coin gives us two options. We can roll a head on our first flip, or we can get a tails on our first flip. And I'm just going to write H or T for that. Now, when I get to my second flip, 
I might get heads on that second flip, or I might get tails on that second flip. I might get heads on the second flip if I rolled tails first, or I might get tails on the second flip if I rolled tails first. And each of these different possibilities is equally likely to occur. If I wanted to write out my sample space for flipping two coins, I actually end up with four different options. I have heads followed by heads, heads followed by tails, tails followed by heads, and tails followed by tails. I have every option for my first value, and then each of those gets all the options for the second flip as well. This allows us to do slightly more interesting uh, probabilities. Let's say I wanted to find the probability that I get the same result with both flips. I can look up here and there's two ways that this could happen. I could get heads over heads or I could get tails and then tails. There's four equally likely options. So four is the bottom of my denominator and two ways that that could happen. Two over four is my probability in fraction, unreduced fraction form. And then just like before on the last assignment, you also change this to a decimal and convert it to a percentage form. I want both the unreduced fraction that we get from the situation as well. So here we get 0.5, change that to a percentage form by multiplying by 100 and we end up with 50%. And so I'd be looking for both of these results. Let's say instead that I want the probability of getting at least one head from flipping my coin. Well, I still have four equally likely outcomes because my event that was going on here is I'm flipping two coins. My probability then is going to be those four equally likely outcomes. And in this case, how many ways can I get at least one head? This one would work. Heads and then tails would work. Tails and then heads would work. Tails and tails would not work because that doesn't have any head in its description. So in this case, I can count up and I end up with three out of four possibilities for getting at least one head. And in this case, I can divide and I can multiply by 100 and I find that 75, there's a 75% probability of getting at least one head if I flip a coin two times. Now, just in terms of some vocabulary here, Let's suppose that I'm interested in getting exactly one head in my flip. I still have my four options. I'll rewrite them since we're getting a little bit messy there. Heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. If I'm looking at getting exactly one head, I, this time I can't include the heads followed by heads because that's two, but I can get the count the heads and then tails. I can also count the tets, tails and then heads. Each of those has exactly one in its value. So four equally likely outcomes, two of which get me exactly one head, which is 0.5 or a 50% chance that I'll get one of each. So again, pay attention if you're looking at exactly or at least, at least means one or more exactly is going to be only one in that resulting list. So here what we're doing again is we're calculating probability. And with our theoretic, theoretical probability, we are still talking about creating a fraction. The bottom value of my fraction is going to be the total possible equally likely outcomes. And if we can list those in our sample space, that's a great way to do our calculation. And then the top is just going to be the number of desired outcomes that are specific to whatever probability you're trying to calculate. All right, in the next video, we'll take a look at some other theoretical probability examples.